Hi everyone and welcome back or welcome to The Psychology of Success. I'm Paul McVeigh and if you're joining us for the first time, I've been on a journey through the world of professional football. It's taken me to the Premier League and international football and for the last 10 years I've been sharing my passion for psychology and mental performance in the corporate world to help people improve the quality of their work and their lives. I'm delighted to introduce my guest today. Barbara Roop B is the current head of EMEA for Allianz Global Investors after a stellar career in the financial services industry. So Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate you, you joining me and giving us your time today. And, and I suppose the first thing when I hear you're saying thank you. Most people pick up on my accent, but I've picked up on a little accent from you. So firstly, um, where are you based today and where are you from? Um, I'm Swiss for the most. I have an American. One, one, one part of my parentage is American, one is Swiss. But right now I'm, I'm doing this podcast out of my Frankfurt office. The oh, good thing about working for a... For a EMEA player is that we have uh, many an office and many a jurisdiction, and hopefully post COVID, I can see my colleagues in the different offices, including London, more often again. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's absolutely and something we're, we're going to discuss of exactly you know what you're doing now, where, where you've been in your career, as I said, a stellar career in the financial services industry, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you've managed to make that happen, but. I normally kick off the show, Barbara, with the first question that I ask all my guests. And that question is, what is the definition of success? The definition of success now in a personal sense or, or in a sense as you see it um, in the industry? I suppose if it's possible, if you could give me a personal one and maybe a professional one as well, if you could. Um, the personal one is very simple, live happy. Um, so uh, live happy and balanced would be for me a definition of, of personal success. Having a good a balance between uh, work and life, uh, family and friends, um, and in essence just progress happily through life. Uh, professionally for me it's about success, is about continued growth, continued learning, continued expansion, not in terms of necessarily of Yes, let me be so direct in terms of title or paycheck, but rather in terms of growth, um, in terms of learning and taking in new experiences and building upon those that you've gathered so far. Yeah, it's really good because it's interesting when I ask that question, you know, to the variety of people I've been really fortunate to have as guests on the show. They do normally just give me one specific answer. And actually, ironically, it's mostly professional. They don't always touch on the personal of, of what, what their definition of success is, but it's good to hear a little bit of both because I suppose, you know, both parts of our life, the personal and the professional are inextricably linked. And, and really what I'd love to hear, Barbara, if, if it's okay today is just a little bit of, of kind of where things started for you, because I feel that, you know, the success you've had in your career is quite rare in terms of the amount of women that have got to the top of your industry because it is very male dominated. So I'd love to hear how that started and being at the top of a financial services, you know, massive player in terms of Alliance. Is that something that you always wanted to do from a child? Not at all. I thought I would become an archaeologist, actually, hopefully. Um, but um, in the end, I did first join the financial services because the training program that I was offered it sounded exciting. It included traveling, it included gathering knowledge. So I figured, yeah, why not? But it's not something I aspire to. And frankly, I, it's not something I planned for, nor has my career any step in it that I actually planned for. I do believe in seizing the moment. Um, and it's really about that continued learning effect that I talked about before. So for me, it's important that I continue to grow as a person, as a professional. And yes, yeah, so jobs just added on to one another. Um, it's also not been straight a straight line. Um, I've um, I've changed within the industry um, my path quite a couple a couple of times significantly uh, because I felt I was getting to the end of the road um, in one element at play. So it is really about about that growth, about continued learning, and also the ability of giving back at some point too. Well, that's interesting, that, that continuous growth, because 
I don't know if I came across that until probably much later in my professional career. It was something that you know I wasn't fully aware of, especially growing up. Is, is that something that that was influenced on you, or maybe passed down to you from either family or parents or people around you? Certainly, I think my mother was a big influence in that, as are my siblings. So um, we're quite an inquisitive bunch, if I may say. And learning and 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 gathering knowledge um, was always a big part of how we shared information in my family, how we grew together. Um, and in that sense, I consider myself lucky having had such um, such evolved parents to to help us foster that growth um, in a in a major way. And that's carried me through my personal and professional life: this to be inquisitive, to learn more, to ask the question. Um, and to look behind the surface. Well, I suppose the question then that really jumps right at me straight away is, what happened if you didn't have that kind of influence and people around you weren't curious, inquisitive about learning? What do you think might have happened to you or what path might you have gone down? No idea. Never asked myself that. I, I tend to not look back, Paul. So I'm, I'm more about what comes next or what I, I live in the moment. Um, I don't believe too much analysis of one's past failures will happen. They help to some degree, I'm sure, but it's not what I do. I tend to live in the moment and look forward to the next step. So um, it's not something I, I spend time on, very honestly. Yeah, no, and I, and I really appreciate that that honesty. And I suppose my goal and what I want to do with this whole podcast series is is to try and understand why someone like yourself might come from not even really wanting to work in that financial services industry, now getting you know to the top of in that kind of you know executive level across you know you like Allianz. I think from what I've researched, you just look after you know is it five hundred billion euros or dollars or pounds? It is just such a massive organization <laughs> to be part of. Yes, but it's um, again, it's it's all part of the of that growth perspective. So I don't believe success has a recipe. Um, to be very honest, or achieving professional or personal success has a recipe. It's about uh, being able to to adapt with the environment, um, put in a good shift. It's the same, I'm sure, for you as it or it was. I'm sure the same for you when you when 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 you when you were at the top of your game um, in the sports world. So it's putting in a good shift and and be and being continuously continuously um, up for the learning experience and adding, wishing to add, wishing to support your colleagues, wishing to to do well um, for those that you are spending time with, those that you work with. Yeah, so can you give us a little but bit just of an understanding? But there, on, there really on. isn't a recipe. There really isn't a recipe for success in my view. Uh, why did I... Uh, probably progress yeah because the continued learning also allows you to analyze to assess situations um perhaps to more depth um than those that do not have a similar experience and that can help in finding solutions and today the world is such a quickly evolving place and unless you 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 have a solution ready relatively quickly you lose out so it's about that about the flexibility of mind as well combined with experience and yes, the willingness to put in a good shift. <laughs> I like that. I do. I do love that phrase, put in a good shift, because that's very much a phrase we would use in the football world. Um, so, just for anyone who might not have come across your profile or, or heard of you before, Barbara, can you give us a little bit of an idea of your current role in Alliance and kind of what you need to look after in terms of people and assets? Yeah, so um, it is It is in that vicinity that you mentioned before. We look after the assets of um, institutional, wholesale and retail clients across the field in EMEA. Um, those clients vary from a individual um, who has uh, put out an investment contract with the Allianz Insurance Group and has investment attached to it to a large pension fund or a, or a, a sovereign wealth or state fund or central bank. Um, who has entrusted us with the management of their assets. So it's very varied. Um, we link investment solutions with clients of all shapes, sizes, and also goals. And in essence, it's a very diverse job that I'm, 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 I'm currently have the pleasure of working in. 
and I work with a great bunch of um, a great bunch of folks in different jurisdictions. We have um, in all the major major um, countries in EMEA, we have a presence, uh, some larger, some smaller, from Italy up to Sweden and from London um, down to Sicily. So it's it's a it's a very interesting environment. And why is it so interesting? Because especially in Europe, there's no one size fits all, as you know well, Paul. Um, each country has its own regulation, and despite the EU framework, um, each country has its own preferences um, and likes, dislikes, um, how they like to invest or uh, safe keep their monies. And in essence, it's really about finding that local solutions for those elements at play. Yeah, this is, it's, it sounds very complex, very complicated probably a lot of moving parts just to, in the in the role that you have today but as i say that's that's right at the very very top of one of the biggest organizations in the financial services world so when i say you didn't want to get into this at the start you know you wanted to be an archaeologist and you suddenly stumbled across this world of financial services what was your initial impression of going into this huge industry well at the time it was um I joined the banking world in New York uh, at the time with a training program that I'd entered of one of the large banks. And really what I found was, wow, there was so much information um, provided to you um, and or giving, given access to on a, on a regular basis. I found it fascinating that decisions um, can be driven by a multitude of information levels that you can obtain rather quickly. And I found that fascinating, the ever-changing environment that you have in financial services, which allow for those that enjoy uh, taking in information and putting it together, making it work in terms of the solutions to be found. That's what really fascinated me from the start. And I continue to find that uh, incredibly fascinating. This, you know, the world of politics, of economics, uh, geopolitical aspects, everything flows into an invest into a decision making element in financial services. Um, and one has to enjoy that. But that's I still find that as fascinating as I did when I first joined the bank. <laughs> well, if you are joining us and we are going live across LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, I'm Paul McVeigh, and this is the psychology of success. And I'm really pleased to say we have Barbara Roof B joining us, who's the head of Allianz Global Investors for EMEA. And Barbara, we're just talking about you coming into this financial services industry and suddenly find this world of you know complexity. And as I mentioned earlier, so many moving parts. At the start of your career, did you think there was a natural progression of where you started to potentially where you are today? Or was there certain challenges and barriers that you might have faced along the way? I think we all fell into challenges and barriers, but I didn't. I didn't plan for the role I currently inhabit, nor for progress. At the time, it felt right and it felt interesting. So, I was in it for the for the flow of things, for the road to take, uh, not for its outcome at that time. Frankly, I didn't. I just. I didn't. I was. I wouldn't have been able to think that far ahead, Paul. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have been <laughs> my preference. <laughs> Well, and the reason why I mention it, I suppose you know anyone who's listened to the show before might have heard me talk about you know my my role or my challenge when I came across from Ireland over to England to join Tottenham Hotspur at sixteen, and and I didn't realize it at the time, but I think that I had an inferiority complex that I just thought everybody around me was better, and just because they had an English accent rather than my Irish accent, that that made them a better player. And I'm wondering, you know, if there was something around your mindset or possibly your beliefs or were you the opposite you were just very confident knew you had the ability and just wanted to work hard and do a good job I think confidence grows with experience doesn't it Paul so I wouldn't say I was particularly confident at the same time I felt rather empowered um, by the way I was brought up I was brought up in my family um, with a very um, nurturing a very kind family environment um, that you could literally do anything if you set your mind to it. Like I guess that carried me through that, and of course, there are always setbacks, or you meet people that that you know don't buy into how you do things and so forth. It's more about um, 
looking forward to things rather than analyzing the negative of it, looking towards the positive development and finding the solution rather than delve too much into the why nots. And focusing on your strength, yeah. basically. Yeah, that's actually really interesting you mentioned that. Um, just recently, I was I was doing a keynote for, for a large um, life insurance company. And mm -hmm. when I was there, I also met uh, an Olympic gold hockey player. So, And she talked about one of the things they did really well. And the reason why she believes that they won the, the gold medal in Rio in the 2016 Olympics was that they had a... I suppose a philosophy or a culture of making your strengths even better and understanding what your weaknesses are but not focusing on them and it sounds like you're doing something similar absolutely and it's we had a management training maybe a year ago uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, digital based trainings and it did focus on strength based um, development being aware of your of your challenges let me put it that way is important but focusing on your strengths also makes you more credible because you don't go against the grain of your own personality, of your, of your setup, so to speak. And it allows you to be more secure in yourselves. So strength-based for me is also the basis of, very, of, 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 of a team, of a well-functioning team, and the ability to talk about your challenges as well as your strengths within the framework of the team and see how compatible you are within the team and also how the team can help you on the areas that you feel less secure or confident about. So um, being aware of your strength, I will not comment on the current EM as it's still running and oh, I look forward to the next games tomorrow, Wednesday, and then on the weekend, of course. Um, but look at the teams that are making it further. It's not necessarily the most experienced squad or the one with the um, most, um, most um, highly priced players, but it's those that work together well and are truly a unit because they are allowing themselves to be part of a larger bit rather than playing out the individual only yeah that's i, I love whenever you're I'm, saying things like that and th this is where i really enjoy hearing you know people from different industries different backgrounds just to give you an example um i was really fortunate to speak to a girl called josie rourke who is a director mm -hmm. of a huge you know uh blockbuster movie called mary queen of scots and as a director oh, yeah. she has so many things she needs to look after from everything from margot robbie and saoirse ronan the stars through to you know thousands of cast and crew and she needs to bring all of these people together and parts together so that she produces this, you know, end goal. And interesting, you're talking about teamwork. Of course, my background being in professional football, it's all about teamwork. And so this is interesting how this theme keeps coming up time and again. And, and that's why when you said earlier, you know, I don't think there's a recipe for success, but there might not be one recipe. But one of the things I keep hearing time and time again on this show when I interview really set successful people like yourself is it's about performance and that's almost doing your performance doing your role to an incredibly high level and then there's the leadership part which we haven't touched on yet but we will come to and then the last part is about teamwork and you've just mentioned there because it's not always the highly talented teams that be the most successful it's actually the teams that form and work best together that generally get the success and I very much believe in that. And that also, if you want to go into the leadership aspects, that also is my leadership philosophy. I do not believe in hierarchy or a steep hierarchy of, of things. So it's rather working together with people for mutual success, but also finding complementary strength. Um, in the team that I work with very closely, we have very different strengths, which vary um, in terms of, of how, they, how they are played out. But knowing... Um, who to talk to or who to draw in for to find a solution is equally important. That's what I believe leadership is all about, um, is knowing when to step back, when to let things flow, when to interfere and support. But overall, direct matters from the back rather um, are being able to, just like you put it so well, for a film director, step back and let the proceedings flow. Step in if you feel things are not going into the right direction. Interfere when you believe things are taking the wrong term and then perhaps give suggestions as how to set, set, set everything onto the right path again is a leadership aspect I truly value. 
I do think the um, very, very steep hierarchies of old, especially financial services, tended to have those mostly based on title and so forth, are a thing of the past, especially as people have learned to work digitally uh, much more laterally. Um, so we need to take account for this as well. And the team-based approach where you work to everyone's strength across platforms is much, much more effective these days. Well, I am Paul McVeigh, and this is the psychology of success. And I'm delighted to say that we're going live across LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And Barbara Ruth B, who's the head of EMEA for Alliance Global Investors, is with me today for today's show. And we're already halfway through it, so only less than 30 minutes to go. And Barbara, you're touching a lot of times on leadership, performance, teamwork, all the things that I love. These are the different parts of you know, high performance and elite performance that I love talking about. At what stage did you start performing at a level that was almost a lot higher than maybe your peers and people around you that almost allowed you to progress through your career? Oh, I wouldn't know. To be very honest, I, I still don't. I don't always <laughs> think I do as well. So I don't think I can measure that. So for me, perhaps less than in football, our our success is then measured in dollars and cents. But there's so many variables um, in our world that make that success um, a, a true change environment success. Um, can that come to play? Um, what I enjoy to draw on now is more the wealth of experience, the different the different angles I've been able to enjoy through various jobs in my career that I can now draw upon when I need a solution um, on 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 a relatively short term. So I wouldn't call it that I felt that perform more effectively or better than my peers, not at all. But perhaps sometimes I do have the wealth of experience to draw on uh, which helped me to find that solution that's needed at that point in time yeah and and this is the interesting thing because i think that sometimes whenever you do observe or stand back and see someone who's you know at a certain level in their career or performing at a certain you know i suppose credibility what is interesting whenever i start asking people about that is is almost they don't think that they are doing particularly anything special and yet there are probably very few women in your position who are running huge organizations and, and in charge of so many people and, and the assets that we talked about. And like you just said, you don't even think that you are performing particularly well sometimes. And that's why I find this interesting because our psychology and you know sometimes our beliefs think that, well, what we're doing, it's just normal. But from my side, looking in, Barbara, what you do is not normal. It's actually incredibly high level and incredibly you know, professional. Well, I couldn't I couldn't play for, for the Spurs. <laughs> so Paul, there you go. <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> That's where I look up to you and say, Oh Christ, I'd love to be able to have that much ball control, right? So we all have our talents and they, they play out in different in different ways. Um, so you never know. I'm also lucky that my employer has entrusted me with this with this function. I'm grateful too, because I have an interest I have um, I have literally um, lots of interesting challenges, but ones I enjoy um, to solve. It's like solving, solving, solving a puzzle every day in some cases, which is fantastic. Keeps your mind active, keeps you engaged, makes you happy. An engaged mind is a happy mind in my world, and as long as I have that, well, can't ask for anything else. That and health. <laughs> yeah, of course, health, health, incredibly important for for all of us. And and and, and when you say you know that that your employee. Employer alliances, you know, they look after you and they, you know, they've given you this position. But of course, it's not just Allianz, you know, it's UBS, it's, it's Deutsche Asset, it's uh, HSBC. So there seems to be a lot of employees that seem to like what you do. Yes. Then I'm also, uh, you could also turn it in a different way. You could say, well, Barbara, you ain't particularly loyal, are you? You've changed your job a, a bunch of times. Um, I also believe that you have a time and a place to give your best. And um, I've worked for one employer long, for some employers longer than others, but sometimes the role allows you to play out the best of your experience for a certain time period. And then you come to, uh, to the end of, of what the most is that you can give. And then it's for me, or it was always for me I, that I took the liberty for myself to take another step if I felt I needed to. 
um, or an opportunity arose where I felt I could probably give more or learn something else. So uh, this is a, a bit of liberty, which else is also, yeah, it's, 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 you could call it selfish. Uh, in my case, I know I do my best for a certain amount of time in a job. After, after four or five years, I li or sometimes even earlier, I've given it all I can. And if I cannot continue to evolve, I will not be able to play at such a high level of performance just to make that bridge to what we discussed before. And then either I, I switch jobs within the same firm, and if that's not an availability, I might take the liberty and step, step out into something else. Um, that's also a realization I've, I've come to over the years that for every job, your experience, whatever you have to give, peters out at some point in time. And then it's your choice of how you deal with it. Whether you want to remain a, a top performer or whether you feel you can still have something to give or whether it's just not there anymore. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting you say that because I suppose whenever I'm thinking of what a life or a career would have been like in that corporate world and going through the different, I suppose, positions and seniority levels all the way through to the different companies you could work for. I'm wondering if that is just normal in the financial services industry and that's why you know you do what you do, or is this ju just something that you've decided that this is a belief for you and that's the way that you want to have your career? I would never, I would never, uh, you know, impose my judgment on others. I know that that what that's what works for me. I, 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 I like to give my best, my all to what I do in the moment and and for a certain amount of time. And if I feel I'm running out of ideas or options to improve and continues on continued improvement is what I'm after really for the job for myself, um, then I tend to revisit. Um, of why and how I'm currently in the position for. And that, that is, that is, I wouldn't call that a particular recipe for success because those that have been very successful usually spend a very long time in the same firm. So that's what I said. It's very individual of what you need to, to do to make things work for yourselves. And I do think it's, it's a coincidence that, you know, you happen to be in the Frankfurt office in Germany and, the reason why it sort of resonated so much with me when you mentioned how you've done and why you kind of moved different roles throughout your career is because I had a manager, a Scottish manager called Paul Lambert, who won the Champions League with Borussia Dortmund. And he actually said the same thing for me. He said he didn't want to stay at a particular club any more than about three to four years because he said the exact same thing that you said. He thinks that's enough time to go in, make an impact, get your philosophy, you know, sort of push that across the club and, and create that culture, try and have as much success as you can and then move on and do it again. So is that to do with whether it's his ability to have sustained long-term success or do you think it's because that's most impactful? Well, I do think you have different profiles and managerial profiles, whether in football or in finance, in the financial industry. It, it, in essence, you have change managers who like to take things apart and put them back together again in a different order perhaps or change teams change the approach change the elements at play uh, that's what probably mr lambert sounds um sounds all about uh, i haven't followed him much so I, I i couldn't say um but that's certainly true for me i like to improve the environment i'd like to improve the recipe of success when i'm when i have the chance um uh, to do so and I guess that's, that's the key reason. I enjoy change very much. Probably you could say I get bored easily. Yes, probably true. So I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a status quo manager. I'm a change manager. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. You call yourself a manager. I probably would define you more as a leader or put you into the leadership uh, category. And if I were going to call you a leader and if you were going to describe yourself as a leader, how do you think you would describe yourself? Um, a leader. How I describe myself as a leader. Ooh. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a mix. So uh, for me, leadership is a team aspect. So we lead actually in a team of folks that I have the pleasure to work with. Um, so I would 
call myself a collaborative leader um, in, in terms of leadership style, but I'm also not, a, not, not afraid to, to get my hands dirty. So I, I like very much uh, to be leading with, from example, by example, in essence. So leading from the front, with example, think, but in the collaborative style. <laughs> do you think? Do you think you have to be an expert in the area that you're working in to lead that team, or do you just have to think that you need to be a really good leader of people? No, you do have to be an expert. Let me be very honest. There, um, our, our world is has very has many variables. You called it complex or complicated before, and that's true. It has lots of variables. You do have to have a certain sense of knowledge of those variables in order to be able to find successful solutions, yes. So I'm afraid without the specialism, just the leadership itself will not be doing the trick. <laughs> can, can you give me an example of that complexity? Because I, I think I was making an assumption that it must be complex and must be complicated, but can you give me maybe some of the complexities Absolutely. or some of Let the challenges just, you've had? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the complexity of it is you have moving parts. Those moving parts are the financial markets, stocks, bonds, derivatives, all moving across the globe, sometimes in different speeds. And you employ this as the, ba the base of your investment solutions, so to speak. Um, when you translate those into client investment solutions on the ground, they need to also fit into the regulatory framework and the preferences of how clients would like to purchase those products locally. So very much um, in the sense of the UK, you have uh, special frameworks like the OIC regime or a special fund regime where things have to fit into. And clients have preferences whether they like stocks or bonds or a mix thereof. And you have to know what the framework is and how the underlying variables move in order to come up with that solution. So that's where the specialist knowledge or the experience is needed in order to draw from um, for a successful outcome. Well, I am delighted to say that Barbara Ruth B is joining us today and we're going live across LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And we are discussing her career, her incredible career in the financial services industry. She's now head of EMEA for Allianz Global Investors. And Barbara, whenever I think about the start of your journey and, and where you are now, it feels like it's been a sort of a, quite a rapid, but also a, sounds like a smooth progression for you. But surely everything in your career can have gone that smoothly. No, I wouldn't say. I mean, if you, um, I, I've, like I said, I changed paths a couple of times within the financial services. There are also different, you know, different areas that you can delve into. So I wouldn't say it's been a, a ver always a smooth transition no but it's been a ever evolving one so i've always been able i've been fortunate enough to always add learning add experience may that be in different jurisdictions or different different areas so um you you grow stronger with the challenges you face that's what i would say and it just adds to the pile of, of knowledge well, you say it might be you grow stronger with challenges, but of course we know that some people come up against challenges and aren't able to either meet them or overcome them. So that, that's really what I find interesting, that it seems like that your mindset is so focused on success, so focused on you know creating that, that uh, solution to whatever seems to be in front of you. And that in itself is such a powerful mindset. But it's about being inquisitive and wanting to learn, Paul. It really is because it's not so much, and in all honesty, um, it, it wasn't about achieving a certain step in the career. It's about that growth. It, it's about learning more stuff. It's about you know working out of a different country. I've never worked in Germany before I joined Deutsche in 2014, and it's been a really interesting, interesting journey. Um, so you learn with every step. That's the fun part. You meet different people. People give you a lot of energy. The energies vary depending on what their emotional makeup or experience or backdrop is. So it, all these variables um, lead to continued growth and fun. It sounds like you're really, really enjoying your life, enjoying your job. And, and, and that's, it's so good to see because I think a lot of people who potentially could be in your position might not always see it as fun and enjoyable. And slightly more stressed and maybe a little bit more frustrated in their careers. 
Yeah, but one shouldn't take oneself so seriously, Paul. <laughs> so that's another element. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's, um, you know, I mean, honestly, would it make a big difference if um, for Allianz Global Investors, were I not be doing this job, they probably would have equal talent or different talent that would do it a little different. I'm very aware that our impact is in the moment. It's perhaps lingering in some cases a little longer than others, but you know, there is always talented people out there that could do your job just as well or even better than yourselves. And so um, it's it's about being mindful or being aware of the lack of one's own importance and make the most of what you have and what you can bring to the table in the moment and the immediate future. And all that planning, I see lots of my colleagues or colleagues in the past who told me about their life plan. And I found that always interesting. I was quite envious because I never seemed to be able to do that. You know, having certain milestones reached at certain point in, in life. I, let me be very honest. I never did that or never managed that as well. So, um, but I'm quite confident that if you work with good intent, if you, if you try, if you really aim for the best for those around you, especially, um, things will carry you through. It's about that confidence of the positive. Well, it's so funny you've just said that about almost like your 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 own lack of importance. Which, let's be honest, in my world, whether it's professional football, whether it's in the corporate world, I see now, I see a lot of people with their own importance, and it's a very high importance. And interestingly, last time we had the the psychologist for the New York Yankees, a girl called Lauren Johnson, and she talked about how when you walk into that change room, you want to walk, work with these high-performing players, baseball players who are being paid you know, tens of millions of dollars every year. You have to check your ego and you have to leave it at the door. And that sounds exactly what you're doing. It doesn't, it's not helpful, let me put it that way, because your ego gets in, in the way of things. But air also, that probably... Um, you, you, you've touched briefly upon the male-female conundrum in the financial industry there before. I find it probably easier as a female to put that ego aside because even growing up, it wasn't expected. Even my father didn't expect me to have a career or not a big one in any case. Um, it wasn't just expected. So I don't have the burden of having to as many of my male colleagues or even my brothers had. I just don't have it. So in essence, it leaves you rather free and you can explore. So it's yeah, actually I, quite, um, I, I, how should I say, it's, it's, um, it's empowering <laughs> if you don't yeah, have to. I, 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 love, I love to hear that, but I do think that there is that issue that a lot of people do bring their ego with them and it, it is just something that's probably part of life. But if you are joining us, we have got another five to ten minutes left with Barbara Ruth Beef. She is the head of EMEA for Allianz Global Investors. And Barbara, we're just talking about, you know, checking your ego at the door, trying to work with that sense of balance in your life. And it sounds like it's something that you've managed to do that probably not a lot of people would have in their lives. Yeah, well, I, it's, I'm not sure about that. So today I, I, I enjoy sports a lot. I'm in the mountains a lot. Um, I, for me, that's important. Sports helps me to balance my life, but it's also um, good friends, the family, and so forth. Balance is something very individual um, of what people need to be balanced. I need, I need uh, a lot of time outside. I need a lot of time with my family and friends in order to be balanced, and that helps me to get through the day. And there, of course, are changes as well. Uh, it's much, much easier to be happy and balanced in the summer when you can get outside than if your day is, is curtailed by the sun going down at 4 p.m. and so forth. So it's about finding those good spots in your life and, and drawing upon the strength of those um, and perhaps circumvent a little bit the very challenging elements. And, and I, I love to hear that because since I've come out of the world of professional football, that has been the one goal that I've been striving towards, which is balance. Because I think it's more because in a professional football and career, you probably have very little balance because I think you know virtually 99%, 100% of my focus and attention was on being a professional footballer. So, you know, you didn't know when your next day off was going to be. It was just all down to the manager and their decision. Whereas now that I'm in control of my own 
destiny and career, then balance for me is so, so important. But I think, you know, they're also the work I've done in the corporate world in the last 10 years, Barbara. I don't see many people do it. And in fact, it's the opposite. A lot of people get to the stage where they have that burnout and probably the last 18 months has really highlighted how many people have that. Yeah, but that's your own choice as well. I mean, it's like I told you before, I don't believe I'm indispensable uh, by no means. And I know that if I take a couple of days out and, and head up to the mountains for a long, good hike, um, or I just spent this weekend with some friends at a, um, a yoga retreat at a winery, a bit of a paradox, but it worked really well. <laughs> so um, finding those sweet spots in your life uh, makes you a more balanced person and just always be geared towards the blackberry or the iphone is not going to do that for me so i know i work better when i'm in a balanced framework or a balanced piece in, in, in a balanced place in terms of mindset so that's one of the aims i have and i work better that way if i take the time out if i take the weekend if i don't check the phone every five minutes uh, but focus when i'm there and it's finding that balance of what you need to do to make the job work and what you need to do to make the balance aspect of your life work. And there has to be space for both if you want to be successful long term. Else you just run out of, yeah. you run out of energy yeah. very very early on. And I've seen that too, especially in the last eighteen months. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. And I think the key phrase in there is if you want success in the long term, and I think that's probably what most people would be striving for and very few ever manage to do. So Barb, I only have a couple of questions for you left now today. And I suppose listening to your journey and your career, I'm not sure if there will be an answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Has there been a price to your success? Um. Not yet, let me put it that way. Or perhaps you could say, for some folks, um, uh, if you'd ask my sister, she'd say, well, you, spend, you don't spend enough time with me and you don't come traveling with me enough. <laughs> and my husband might be saying the same thing, that I'm not spending enough time at home. But for me, frankly, because I love my work and it's kind of, um, it's, it's part of the same balance, Paul. Uh, not yet. Uh, but who knows what comes up next? So you never know. You know, um, that's also, but, but, you know, just drawing back quickly on what we discussed before, that's why you see me in the office today. For me, a balance in the future will be, I found working in the home office much more strenuous than working from the office. Because in the office, if I leave at seven, whatever, six, seven, eight, the, the day is done and I will focus on what comes after. If I'm home and the PC is up and I, something comes to mind, I would rush back and just add that bit or write up that piece or check this information. So for me, the balance will be of how we will work in the future and can we balance our home life or our home office life with our work office life well. And that's going to be a big challenge for many coming out of the pandemic situation. And that balance is a, is a tough one to strike. Um, that's something that's important to me to mention. But for me, the price to be paid, I'm sure if one would look back, there would be elements where, ah, well, rather have spent a little more time at home then or taken that trip with my, with my parents when I could still do it. Um, it hasn't happened. So again, I don't try to focus on, on, on the past, but rather in the, on, on the day now and what comes in the immediate future. And so I can say with confidence, if there is a price to pay, I'm sure it might come up, but not yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's amazing to hear because I, I'm also, you know, when I ask that question, I never want, you know, a kind of a negative answer. I'd love to hear, much prefer to hear the answer that you've said about how it seems to be very much about living in the moment and that whole, you know, uh, concept around present moment, whether you've read the book by Eckhart Tolle and just it's all about the here and now. And it sounds like that's what you're doing, which is probably giving you the, the success that you've had. Okay, Barbara, but listen, the final question I have for you today, and again, I just appreciate the honesty that you've you've shared with us today. And I asked you about def what the definition of success. In 2021, at this stage in your life going forward, what is your definition of success? My definition of success, what we continue the path that we have in 
in, in how our team has worked and that we continue to evolve because we've made some changes. We've, we've, uh, we've um, ha have a plan for each country in place and I hope that we can evolve that further. So for me, uh, the definition of success is continuing in this positive path. At the same time, have a ton of laughs. Um, and if I could finally see most of the colleagues that I work with in person again, oh, that would be optimal success. So there you go. Oh, amazing. Barbara, Ruthie, and see, and thank you so much for your time. A, and seeing a couple of football games live again rather than on TV, <laughs> Paul. That would really make me happy. <laughs> well, if I was if I was able to help you with that, I will do my best to try and get into the stadium to watch some football again with you. <laughs> Barbara, I've absolutely loved this. I really, really enjoyed it. And again, very much from my heart, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for giving the opportunity to be on your podcast, Paul. I very much enjoyed it as well. Thanks so much. The best of luck to you, all of you Brilliant. out there. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, if you have enjoyed listening to that, please do join us again for another episode of The Psychology of Success.